Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. 12 o'clock location, we have Kiko starting as the blue Terran. We got to see good looks of, of him in the round of 32. Also check him out in STPL, which is the clan league that uh, that Quix runs. Go ahead. It's a fun channel. It's a fun time there. A little bit more of a relaxed cast. Actually seeing a lot of BS. There's a lot of BSL lap over between here and there. I feel like his factory play is particularly strong. Bottom left-hand corner. At the approximate 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock location, we have Master Ray starting as the Purple Protoss. This is going to be on Ascension once again. And this, again, I feel like this is a group of death. Master Ray ta uh, taking the championship in BSL Season 11, taking third place, was on the verge of another championship last season. So, spoilers there. Zeddy, when I, I had to actually redo this commentary because I was like, Dreamer made it to the finals again. Who did he play? He played Zeddy. I think Zeddy moved on to uh, Gosu League this season. I believe he moved on to Gosu League this season. Between these two, I am going to give an advantage to Master Ray, but it is one of those situations where I do think Kiko is a strong enough player to pick games off of him. And as far as who's going to pull out of this group, I am not sure. I really do think it could be any one of these players. Any, All, th all four of them are very strong. Exit can sneak game. I think Exit's a creative enough player where he can sneak games off Master Ray, although I do think Master Ray is the stronger player there. Kiko could sneak games off anybody. Um, they're just, yeah, it's pretty well balanced. I feel like Master Ray is maybe the favorite to go ahead and sneak out and pull this off just because we have seen him beat. It looks like he's opening up a, a gateway assimilator build. Um, I'm going to give Master Ray a slight edge over the other players, just seeing uh, his strength of play in previous seasons and just overall. But anyone can beat anyone. So it could just be what ha you know who's having a good day and who's having an off day. Thus far, it looks like Exit having a little bit of an off day on the other side of the bracket. I think he'll... We've seen Exit's TVT be pretty strong. So if he ends up playing Kiko, I might favor him in that matchup. If he ends up facing Master Ray, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if he'll... Because Master Ray is a really, good, a really intelligent player, and oftentimes Exit does well throwing players off balance, and Master Ray seems to be able to deal with that sort of stuff very well. So... I feel, we'll see how this plays out. We'll stop speculating about who might win the game. We have a refinery up, barracks built, supply depot, no front, no, no front door seal once again. Notice this is kind of something Kiko likes doing. SCV's going to wander in and see the cybernetics core building. Sees uh, kind of standard play here. One gate thus far. Second probe scout for Matt. Sorry, the probe scout for Master Ray, not a second probe scout. Checking out that bottom right-hand base. It's going to cycle around come... Uh, next, the Marines getting in the way to go ahead and block information. I do believe that this is indicative. It, nope, never mind. I was going to say that potentially this is going to be uh, two factory build, but I think this is just going to be one factory into expansion, seeing that one SCV on gas. And also seeing, uh, looks like three Marines being built. They're pressing a little bit for the want to go ahead and blockade the gap and, and deny information. Kiko backing out to the natural expansion, just making sure. And I think he's going to camp this SCV down here potentially to go ahead and try to keep an eye on what Master Ray does along the line. Range upgrading, first Dragoon out. Probe moving out to the natural expansion to go ahead and grab that. So it is going to be one gate into expand. Kiko with the Marines in the gap, and he's already setting up to grab his natural expansion. It looks like with the speed of all this and the scouting information he's got. Um, so first factory down. Reading the situation correctly. He's very, yeah, going to get that command center, which is a, a nice economic leap. The Dragoon moving out, hunting down that SCV, has already done a bit of damage. This probe coming back to home base without dying. So the SCV dies. It verifies that Nexus. So now the question is, is what does Master Ray do from here? He's pressing up with those Dragoons. This Vulture is sneaking out. Let's see if it gets some... Now, this, is, this could be key. If this Vulture manages to run by, the Dragoon should pull back and get a defensive position. If another Dragoon's built and just plugs this gap, these Dragoons can, may, can potentially harass the front. This bunker is going to be late. It's not going to be up in time. But this could go either way. I'm not sure how this is going to play out because this is four Marines versus two Dragoons. The Dragoons are going to have range momentarily. They're going to be able to pick off some, at least a Marine before this bunker's finished. Maybe even three Marines before this bunker's finished. So Kiko sneaking just a Marine and an SCV in this base, and that is going to allow these Dragoons to do a lot of damage. The Vulture holding up short. No Dragoon blocking this gap yet, so it might be tit for tat. This for, this Dragoon being produced just in the nick of time, not able to block, actually looks like... Ah, it is! Turning around, getting some nice disruption there. So Master Ray with a nice reaction, able to block that gap, and that Vulture going to go ahead and back off. Siege Tank is out. Natural Expansion not quite up. 
And let's see if that siege tank is siege tech been upgraded yet. I do not believe so. So the tank gonna harass. There's not enough dragoons where they could really threaten that. But keep in mind, if Master Ray follows up with more dragoons, because there's so few marines in this bunker, these siege tanks are gonna be all the more vulnerable. Nexus, so no saturation of the SEs uh, just yet. Technically, this puts Terran ahead because he's, first of all, this is uh, better saturated, uh, but but it looks like Master Ray shortly. Let's see what he, he plays from here. He has tacked on. He's going three gate. He's got the robotics facility. He's got the observatory. Uh, see how he plays from here. Usually, if it's just two base versus two base, that usually gives Terran the advantage. Kiko behind this, grabbing uh, an academy to go ahead and get comsat and see what he's up against. Still sitting on one factory, which suggests... And no armories as of yet, so it suggests that he's maybe thinking about going for more of a slow three-base play. Uh, in the interim, just two Dragoons on the front. This Dragoon with, I gotta say, this is impressive. Four kills. Four kills on that Dragoon off the bat. And being, being that it's one of the first two Dragoons, really strong play. So three gateways down. Master Ray slow playing it at this stage. I think he wants to get eyes inside Kiko's base to see what he's up to before he responds. The second factory being built, the Lurker Egg uh, being assailed. It looks like we do have three siege tanks in the background, a bunker on the front. Um, interesting location for that supply depot uh, behind all this. And there's that armory. I feel like this armory, I think, I'm not sure on all my Tyrant times, but I feel like this armory is going to be a little bit late. I don't think this is going to be an armory that's going to open up. Uh, if there is going to be a timing attack, I think it's going to end up being a little bit later. This is a third factory behind this so it looks like he may still be trying to transition into that let's see if machine shops get bit get dropped behind this the observer pinging in kiko dropping uh some scans he's critically checking that third base and seeing that master ray already has a probe in position to grab that third so both players getting a lot of important critical information here and master ray continuing to just pump out the dragoons he's getting a shuttle as well i think that shuttle's more a defensive shuttle than an offensive shuttle in the midst of this although it is possible he could elevator some dragoons into the main but given this number of C and again, this is having just the single Marine here could be a significant threat because basically what Master Ray could do is you could force two Dragoons back here, which will pull some troops off the front. And then with a uh, sufficient amount of Dragoons on that main, he might be able to sneak back and pick off siege tanks. We'll see though. looks like this is going to be, so this is two machine shops up, a Goliath being built, two Goliaths being built, interestingly, which again, playing more of a, a defensive posture in that regard. However, I feel like Master Ray is in a sufficient enough position where he can just rely on getting that third up, play the macro game from here. And again, I'm going to see if Kiko opts to plant the two additional factory, to go up to the five factory, potentially six factory, and go with that weapons one, getting a good scan and picking off that observer here. But I think, yeah, he's just going to, yeah, setting everything up to go more for a slow play. It looks like he is building that third command center. Master Ray moving up with a lot of Dragoons to go ahead and contest that. Five Seas Shanks on the front, pushing the Dragoons uh, back in the meantime. We do, we do have that shuttle with those Zealots. So Master Ray is going to try to contest this. And this is only going to be, what is it, six Siege Tanks versus a pretty sizable attack force. And he's going to have to attack uphill. And he's going to have he's, his own natural expansion creating a bit of a problem. How did that SCV get all the way into the main? Two additional gateways being planted. It looks like Master Ray starting to set up for more of a gateway style, a gateway man style Protoss. That third base up, he's going to saturate that. And so, honestly, between the saturation, the, poten uh, the potential harassment, I believe Master Ray is going to be in a comfortable, comfortable position. It looks like he's seeding. I'm a little bit surprised he's seeding this ramp. So there's the comps at. Is he going to now turn around and engage it? Kiko a bit surprised as well. You can see sieging on the low ground and going ahead and backing off. So now the command center starting to float out. Master Ray positioning briefly. Kiko looking for an opportunity to go ahead and seize that high ground. Maybe he's wait. It's going to be, this is an interesting play. Kind of tense both directions. Holding that command center out. And really slow playing at both directions. But critically what this is doing is, is this is slowing down Kiko's third base. And slowing down the saturation there. Master Ray completely backing off. Still just camping the Dragoons there. And he's got, that looks like the Stargate behind this. Uh, the Forge rolling the upgrades, picks off another observer. I think Kiko's honestly taking a little bit too much time. He is grabbing two additional factories. Has that starport and that science facility behind this. Let's see if he adds another army behind this. As far as upgrades, Master Ray is not going to, is in a pretty good position. Let's see if he drops down another forge, but he's going to be able to contest that uh, not 
too badly. Still no speed upgrade, so those vultures taking a lot of damage as they're sneaking out. No, f I'm not seeing Master Ray making any position to go ahead and grab a fourth. Continuing to reinforce, he's going to have Zealot Leg Speed momentarily. And Kiko not taking the space before Zealot Leg Speed comes online, that would be a huge mistake. A single Siege Tank wandering up, man, he's absolutely... This just feels a little bit too cautious. Clearing out some of those mines, comps adding that, and Master Ray really has not made a lot of moves here. And it, just sitting there with the Dragoons, actually eating a, a shot, in fact, now backing off some of these troops. And he's just happy to go ahead and camp these, camp the units and be annoying. But on, uh, honestly, you could just pick these up, move them to the south. And he's delayed well, uh, well enough that I don't think that, I, I think it's paid off for him. Let's see if Master Ray go ahead, uh, opts to go ahead and take a fourth. Or if he is just going to full on engage with everything he has, taking additional shots, continuing to back up. And more reinforcements marching up. And Zealot Leg Speed is now in play. So reinforcing Zealots can come from the high ground and sweep to the lo low ground. And Kiko does have Vultures to go ahead and group up. But it's going to be a big fight across the third. And Master Ray, keep in mind, still has the option, which I honestly I think is the great option to take, is just exit with your troops and take, take the win. He's getting an Arbiter behind this. He does have, I'm looking for a second forge. It looks like he's still sitting at one forge. Kiko now pressing forward. Now it's kind of the cutoff point where he's not going to be able to retreat those Dragoons without losing reinforcements across the north, but he's still potentially going to be able to flood Zealots. Now he's engaging those Zealots going across that high ground. And yeah, Kiko taking too much time. The Zealots getting right on top of those siege shanks. The Dragoons pressing into the rest of this. There's a bunker here as well, but no Marines in it. And so Master Ray pummeling into this and he's just going to back the Dragoons. I like that. Do the damage, back the Dragoons right back out. The command center floating forward. I think Kiko now realizing this is taking too long. He's behind uh, a decent amount of supply. The Dragoons assailing this. Two more siege tanks dropping on the low ground. More reinforcements of Zealots wandering up. And again, Kiko needs to hurry up because if these Zealots get here, this is fewer siege tanks without Vulture support to defend against the Zealots on the low ground. And this command center going into the red. Master Ray doing a fantastic job of assailing this. The SCV's running up, taking Dragoon Fire. Yeah, Kiko just playing a little bit too slow. Vultures look like they've managed to lay some mines and cut off some reinforcements, that, but the Zealots that scooted through earlier, able to get Siege Tanks a good mind drag, clearing out the Siege Tanks once again. And Kiko again losing position on that third. And the SCV's as well, as they're in the midst of the tank fire, trying to blockade for the Siege Tanks and defend the SCV. So now Kiko has been behind a third base for quite a bit of time. Let's see if these Dragoons, so small mercies here, these Dragoons look like they're going to get splatted as far as a reinforcement point, finally grabbing his third base. But this is not before uh, Arbiter Tech. Uh, several Arbiters have been fielded. Master Ray looks like he's continuing to field troops out here. I, I think at this stage, he might it might be better to just wander out, grab some territory, and control a fourth. Lost a several amount of troops as far as mines and vultures in the in-between position, but he's way ahead in supply. Ooh, miss macroing a little bit and losing some troops right there. Uh, he does have... Where's the Arbiter? He should have a... I think he should have, a, like, two Arbiters behind this. He's planted a bunch of gateways behind this. So he's absolutely in gateway man position. Looks like he's going to walk this probe out to go ahead and grab his fourth. Kind of wish he did that in the midst of a lot of the attacks that were happening earlier. Because that would have put him... Like, he's, he's already ahead, but he, that would have put him way ahead. A probe wandering through. It's actually interesting because Master Ray by wandering that probe through, might have given Kiko the impression that, oh, hey, I haven't taken my fourth, uh, which might put... <laughs> look at this single dragoon. Okay, it's finally getting wiped out. Engineering Bay in between. Kiko has kept up with his weapons upgrade behind this. I don't think he's dropped a second armory, but he's got level two weapons. Working on level three weapons. Level Just level one, one weapons, working on level two for Master Ray. Some vultures managing to sneak through. Master Ray losing a bit of control. Uh, that might be... Punishing to this fourth base. Let's see some cannons get dropped there to make up the difference. Master Ray at 54 probes. He's going to have four bases saturated. I think the way he wants to play this, and I think it's the correct way to play this at this stage, is he wants to just have that superior ground army where he can just ground and pound anything that Kiko moves out from here and basically contain him at three bases. The Vulture's trying to sneak through. Actually doing a lot of, really softening this army up. The Observer also seeing reinforcements as they're kind of walking across. And I think Kiko yeah, just spent too much time. He's sitting... Looks like on seven factories behind this, only two machine shops critically at this stage of the match. He's getting a science vessel out, trying to get EMP. EMP might be an might be a equalizer. Master Ray unfortunately does not have cannons down to defend this fourth base. It's not saturated yet. Some 
He's moving in some zealots with leg speed to go ahead and try to deal with these vultures. Not exactly the uh, attack combo you want. There, it looks like the Dragoons are going to be able to clear things out. He's going to go ahead and grab yet another expansion at that 3 o'clock base. He's way ahead economically. Does have this Arbiter, and I feel like... Uh, a good stasis or two. This is kind of a soft spot, actually, I'm going to say for Mastery. He's got a big army. I see the 175 supply. I'm just wondering where that army is uh, out in the field. Looks like a, a chunk of it's here, a chunk of it's here. I see one Arbiter, the Arbiter dodging that EMP very, very nicely. Um, a handful of stasis, honestly, could again delay Kiko from going ahead and moving out of that base. So that 3 o'clock base being grabbed. In the meantime, Kiko's main starting to look about uh, pretty thin. Natural Expansion is doing decent, but he's basically two base versus... What will soon be, so that looking about thin, essentially four base Protoss. So he's going to be way behind economically, and Master Ray just happy to go ahead and stage out. And this is going to be a funnel. I really want to see him add some Psystorm in the midst of this, because this is just Psystorm bait at this stage. And honestly, I feel like Psystorm, because of some of the natural artifacts of the map, just make it... Uh, I don't know, I like Psystorm on this map. Uh, I think it's important. Still has that shuttle alongside. It really hasn't been... A big drop factor. The one critical thing that Master Ray has not done is, is it's been kind of a light Arbiter count for him overall. I only see the single Arbiter out in the field. It does have a lot of energy to drop some stasis, but um, Master Ray needs to have that army completely grouped up to kind of pounce on everything. Actually moving up, doing some Zealot Bombs from up above. I don't see the Goliaths actually behind this. A big Zealot Bomb on that forward Siege Tank. And the Zealots immediately able to get front, now engaging a good stasis across... Those siege tanks to the north, and you can just see the overwhelming amount of troops of Master Ray just pummeling into this natural expansion. You can also see where the factor of that level zero armor is playing a big factor, because those zealots are just chewing through these siege tanks extremely rapidly with their level two weapons. Diving to the natural expansion, I think this is certainly going to be GG here. As this third base is just getting absolutely cleared out. The siege tanks are not long for life. I expect Kiko to... I'm actually surprised Kiko has not GG'd yet upon losing that third base. This uh, looked like he had a little bit of harassment at the 3 o'clock location. Several cans being dropped right there. Kiko at practically half the supply. The Dragoon's backing out. The rest of these siege tanks going to be taken out on the high ground. It's interesting that this stasis uh, mor uh, morphed down a little bit later. But Kiko does not have a lot of options. He's trying to feel... Yeah, there's GG. Felt like a little bit of a late GG there overall. But Master Ray playing that Massacre Flea, and just the immense amount of time that he forced Kiko to spend at taking that third was incredible and really won him that match. Really classic, intelligent. I feel like that's the, I don't know, the tactical way <laughs> uh, to play Protoss is kind of use the, the Terran's... It's difficult for Terran to, you know, kind of mount that army and just press into it. And so if you can if you can force him to lay like that, that's that can win you matches. Anyway, so game one in the best of three. Game one going to Master Ray. Uh, move on, moving on to game two momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.